together. But we're together right now. And you know if we were in the room together right now, you know that we wouldn't quite be able to let that go right there. And I could see you in your home. Either you are about to explode or you're wondering when we're going to move on. But I can tell you this, that if you are willing to jump into the river, don't just dip your toe, but jump all the way into the river. No matter what nation you're watching from, no matter what city you're watching from, if you would declare this, you would see it become a reality in your life. As loud as you can, you satisfy. Praise the Lord, everybody. Why don't we stand together? We're going to begin the service by going to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we have special needs to pray for that will be projected. Amen. We um, believe that God is good. And uh, we pray for protection. We pray for especially those of the household of faith. I know people wonder, why, why does God allow all this stuff to happen, like what happened in Texas, what happened in Tulsa today? This is man's day, and God has put the world in the hands of men. And the world is figuring out, and they're seeing how bad things are when man is in control. But one of these days, God's going to take back control when he does, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. In the meantime, we need to pray and ask the Lord to protect us. Ask the Lord to uh, be there for us, protect innocent life. Amen. And so I know with what happened in Tulsa this evening uh, or today, it just makes you like, wow. That's getting closer and closer to home. Amen. But God's in control of our lives, and we surrender and submit to him, and I'm thankful for that. So let's pray that the Lord would protect innocence, that the Lord would protect the household of faith, and everyone for that matter. Amen. You see all of the needs that are projected on our screens. Let's ask the Lord to meet these needs. Pray for our elements class tonight that's going on got some new members in the elements class that's exciting let's pray for our children's service our youth service our bible study amen god's in control of our lives praise god let's pray together heavenly father we thank you for the privilege to serve you thank you for the opportunity to be in your house and to know your will lord i pray god that you would bless every need lord on our prayer list i pray that you would touch those that need strength and healing 
I pray for those that need victory, that those that need financial miracles. I'm asking God that you would minister to them now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you would visit those that are hurting and those that are, are struggling, Lord. Bless them, I pray now in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that you would bless every every service and every part of this service on our campus tonight. Protect us, Lord. Bless our children. Bless our elements class. Bless our youth service, God. I pray, Lord, that you would anoint our Bible study. Help us to learn more about you and your word. I pray that you would have your way in our lives, God. Bless our fellowship together tonight. Thank you for your loving kindness. That's better than life, Lord. I pray that you would be with us, be close to us, be near. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you for it all. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And somebody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The ushers are going to receive the offering this evening. And while they do, let me remind you, under the carport following the service tonight, we'll be having some uh, pop and chips and fellowship. Just stand around and enjoy each other's company and visit. So uh, if you can stay around for that, that would be wonderful. On Friday, Friday morning, um, there are some men in the church that are going to be joining me. We're going to go to the campground and do a little bit of work getting ready for camp. Uh, we have to uh, uh, work on the new mattresses that we received and put a uh, help them put, put a fire retardant uh, cover on them. And so if there's anyone that wants to go with us, we're going to leave at 7 o'clock. And if you don't want to leave till 9 and get there at 11, that's fine. If you want to leave at 5 and get there at 7, just sit and wait on us and we'll be there. But if you can go with us and you, if you'd like to go, we'd love for you to go. It's not going to be hard work at all, just time-consuming work. And we're kind of under the crunch here. We gotta, we've got to get this done before Monday. <laughs> so uh, I'm praying that the, the carrier will deliver what they're supposed to deliver tomorrow. In Jesus' name, if you have nothing else to pray for, pray for that. Amen. So if you can go with me, let me know, and we'll uh, make arrangements. And then um, on uh, Saturday, 12 to 2, weather permitting, is the uh, Trailblazer water party. And so uh, have your Trailblazers here for that. Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. We're looking forward to two great services. It's going to be a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We three baptized uh, Sunday. That was wonderful. One filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. A prelude to Pentecost Sunday. Wouldn't it be awesome for that to continue in Jesus' name? So uh, please be here. Be praying for Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Super Church begins on Sunday for the summer quarter. That's going to be exciting. So your kids are going to really be excited when they get here and see all of the things that have changed in the children's chapel. And so um, Monday starts Crusaders Camp, and uh, Brother Brian is going to be driving the van if your kids need a, a ride to and from Crusaders Camp. Also, I believe at the conclusion of the service, there's going to be a junior camp and senior camp permission, pastoral permission slip uh, for me to sign. So if you register your kids online, put their name on that list, and then I can sign one form for everybody. So uh, please take care of that after the service tonight. So God bless you. It's great to see everyone here. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together with Brother Joel as he comes before the word of the Lord. Let's worship the Lord together.
Just lift a hand and say, I'm here, Lord. Use me and take my heart as your will, Lord. Let me do what you need me to do, Lord Jesus. I will do so, Lord, if you command it. I'm here to worship you, Lord. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Make that your prayer tonight. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Oh, take my hands, Lord, take my, lead me, Lord, touch my heart and speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use. Don't let that just be the words we sing. Let it mean something. Oh, you can use anything. Lord, you can use me. Oh, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Please, Lord, take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, and speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you my heart, Lord, and speed through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use. Take my hands and feet, guide my life. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Yes, Jesus. Stay the same 
for I want to be just like you. That's what we want to do. Use us and make us more like him. And take my life. Please make my life. Oh, just what you want it to be. Please, Lord, please just change me. Oh, change me, dear Lord. Make that a prayer again. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Don't let me stay the same. For I want to be more just like you. Just take my life, Lord. Make my life oh, just one. I close one more time. Oh, change me, Lord. Please change me, Lord. Don't let me stay the same. For I want to be more, be more like you. Come and take my life, Lord. And change me, dear Lord. Real soft, sing like this. Here I am, Lord. Oh, here I am. I'm here for you. I give all. Close, make it a prayer. Use me, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. I give all my soul to you. to say to the Lord tonight, please use me, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Let's all thank him right now for what he's done, for the ability to move through us, to, to give us the gifts, as Brother Martin's been talking about, spiritually, ministerially. Lord, we thank you. Lord, please move through us. Amen. What a wonderful thing to do. Give ourselves to the Lord again and again and again. Amen. Amen. Don't be like the man who married his wife and he said, I told you I loved you when we got married and if anything changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> but did you tell the Lord we love him and dedicate ourselves to him over and over and over again? Amen. 
why don't you uh, greet someone before you're seated. Tell them they're happy they're here. Amen. It's good to see everyone here. God bless you. Amen. Open your Bibles, if you would. You may be seated. You can open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That's where we will be uh, looking into the word of the Lord tonight. I'm not going to read an opening verse yet. I'll be getting to some verses later on. And so um, we're, we're talking about spiritual gifts, and um, we've talked about the service gifts. I won't take time to name them again, but the Lord has blessed certain individuals in the church to be able to bless the church with different talents and gifts and uh, service gifts. And we're thankful for all of those service gifts. And then we talked about the ministerial gifts, what we refer to oftentimes as the fivefold ministry uh, in Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, he gave some apostles, some prophets, in other words, some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers for the, the building up of the body of Christ. Uh, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And we talked all about that, so we won't uh, take time to go back over all of that except to say these are wonderful gifts, the gift of gifts of the ministerial gifts. The Lord sends people, uh, apostles govern. Uh, he speaks through people uh, as prophets to guide. So apostles govern, prophets guide, evangelists gather they gather and pastors ground uh, pastors guard the shepherd the watchman on the wall and teachers ground and so thankful for the fivefold ministry the ministerial gifts that God has given to the church and you may not have ever really stopped to think about that but that's probably why you're here in fact I know it's why you're here because of this ministry that God has given to the church so now, tonight we're going to begin talking about the third and final set of gifts that God has given, spiritual gifts that God has given to the church. And these are what the scripture refers to as the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Now, um, uh, there are... There are a lot of people that don't understand the gifts of the Spirit, okay? They come to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, and th they get the gifts of the Spirit mixed up with the initial evidence of receiving the Holy Ghost, which is what we're going to celebrate on Sunday. And uh, they take the verse, if you just look over at verse uh, Number 29, verse 29, chapter 12, verse 29, are all, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, covet earnestly the best gifts. And they say, well, see, right there it is. Everybody doesn't speak in tongues. So if you want to speak in tongues, go ahead. But everybody doesn't have to speak in tongues. Well, they miss one major point, and that is that this book of Corinthians was written to the church. It was written to people that were already filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. In fact, I didn't give them this verse, but just believe me when I read it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Unto, who was Paul writing to? Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. So this book is written to people who are already filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So when the, when, the, when the scripture says in chapter 12, do all speak with tongues, and the obvious answer to that question is no, he's saying, do, does everybody give messages in tongues in the church? Does everybody interpret those messages? The obvious answer to that is no. Then he goes on to say, covet earnestly the best gifts, which we'll talk about more in a little while. And so many people misunderstand uh, the nine spiritual gifts, and that's why we need to have some teaching about these spiritual gifts. These are in addition to uh, the service gifts and the ministerial gifts. God has given nine spiritual gifts. By the way, he's given, uh, 
He's given nine fruit of the Spirit. Now, did you ever notice this? I may have said this before, but I want to just say it right now. It's not the fruits of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you should be producing all nine of the fruit of the Spirit. That's really not optional. And that's not just reserved for a special few people. And it's not the fruits. So you can say, well, you know, I'm pretty good at love. I'm pretty good at joy. I'm pretty good at peace. Long-suffering, eh. <laughs> Temperance, eh. No, it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's the, it's the Spirit that produces things in our lives. And so uh, everybody must be producing the fruit of the Spirit because that shows that the Spirit of God is working in you. But everybody doesn't produce uh, necessarily all nine gifts of the Spirit. The Scripture says... I'll read it to you in a few moments, that God gives to every man severally as he will. So he operates these nine spiritual gifts through us at his pleasure, in his timing, when they are most needed and will be most valuable for the building up of the church and the kingdom of God. So by way of introduction, let me just say to you that these gifts of the Spirit fall into three categories. We're going to look at them uh, by categories, and that may be beneficial to you. Um, three of them are gifts of revelation or gifts to know. All right? And that is the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. So God gives these gifts to the church so that they will know, so that they will uh, uh, have the revelation that they need. Let me just pause here and just tell you, building a church anytime is challenging. Living for God in, in any time, I know we think, okay, I know we think, you know, the 21st century, this is really bad. You know, the truth is, is that when Nero was, was emperor of Rome, he was taking Christians and hanging them up on spikes and covering their body with tar and using them for human torches. Okay? So I'm thankful it's not hap that's not happening. They would take Christians in, those, in Bible days, they'd sew them up in animal skins and throw them out into the uh, arena and allow the wild dogs to, to chew them up. And so I understand that we have a lot of stuff going on in our world today, but the truth of the matter is a lot of stuff has always been going on for the church. And if, really, if, if we'd really be honest with ourselves, we're probably pretty well off compared to a lot of people. I'm not suggesting that life's a bed of roses, okay? But I am suggesting that you know the world has been in trouble for a long time. Amen. The Herods, think about the Herods. I mean, Herod the Great. He's killing babies, two years old and under, trying to kill a Messiah. He has no, he has no regard for human life, even babies. I mean, uh, think, about, think about these rulers, these, these wicked, sinful, evil rulers throughout history. I'm sure I, I wasn't around during World War II, and I'm, maybe some of you were. I don't know, but I know everybody was wondering, how could... How could Adolf Hitler do what he was doing? And we were all like, this is an atrocity. This is horrible. We read the history books. I've been to the, uh, to the Holocaust Museum. And, and it's just like, I can't believe this actually happened. Things are happening in Ukraine right, right now that we're all like shaking our head at. And I'm just telling you that building the church and, 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 and uh, uh, doing what God's called us to do has been always difficult it is difficult now as well. We need spiritual gifts to help us do the work of God. Life is complicated. You know, I, I'm, I'm being asked questions that I've never been asked before. 
I'm, I'm having to explain things that I've never had to explain before. I mean, it, it used to be very simple. There was male and female. And now I'm having to explain why that's real. It's just, it's just crazy. And I'm just telling you, we need the supernatural gifts of the Spirit operating in the church so that we can become everything that God wants us to be and we can build the church as God wants us to build the church. So don't discount what we're talking about here, okay? Amen. We need to, he said, I read it to you, covet earnestly the best gifts. I need to say in my prayer time, Lord, if you want to operate some of these gifts through me, help me to be willing to do that. Help me to be willing to be used of you in that way because, you know, I'm going to need, I'm going to talk in just a minute about uh, a, a, a word of wisdom. I need wisdom. I need God to tell me how to help you with your problems. I need that wisdom from God. And so God has given these spiritual gifts, these spiritual enablements, if you please, to the church. And so uh, three of these gifts are the gifts to know. A word, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. We're going to go through each one of them individually, so don't get nervous here, okay? Uh, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. Three of these gifts are the gifts to act, or they're the gifts of power. And that is the gift of faith, the working of miracles, and gifts of healing. So God has given these gifts to the church to help the church accomplish what he wants his church to accomplish. So he gives us these gifts of power. And thirdly, there are three gifts to speak, or the three utterance gifts. And that is the gift of prophecy, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues, and the gift of the interpretation of tongues. Now, tonight's probably going to be more of just an introduction to these nine spiritual gifts. And I seriously doubt, since you all are looking forward to chips and pop, I seriously doubt that we're going to get to the first three, but uh, we'll go as far as we can, all right? So I'm hoping that I can lay a foundation here to help you understand these nine spiritual gifts. These spiritual gifts are not salvation. I already said that, okay? I'm going to say it again. They are not salvation. They are gifts bestowed after a person has been saved. Remember, the book of Corinthians was written to... It was written to the church at Corinth, to the sanctified in Christ Jesus. Amen. So it's not a salvation issue. It is an enablement issue. It's giving us the ability to do what God has called us to do. I may say this again in a few moments, but they're kind of like, they're kind of like power tools. Okay? Years ago, they tell me that, and I'm sure it's true, I know it's true, people built houses with hand saws. What a great invention it was when, when air tools, power tools came on the scene. I mean, you had to drag a cord everywhere, but that was way better than... Amazing how wonderful it became when it was all battery operated and now you don't even have to have a cord. And so these spiritual gifts are, they are supernatural enablements that I would kind of liken unto power tools or power gifts to help the church become as effective as possible. Amen. And so we need these gifts. So let's begin in verse number one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the first three verses here to help you uh, kind of orient us for these gifts, okay? So Paul said, in, in beginning in, in uh, verse 1, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant, uh, unlearned. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. You know, he never took the course on how to win friends and influence people, apparently. 
He said, you know, you know that you all were Gentiles and you were worshiping dumb idols. Idols that couldn't hear, couldn't see, couldn't speak, couldn't do a thing for you. So he says, uh, Corinthians, you uh, emerged out of a pagan Gentile background. And although you were born again, you were still unlearned about spiritual matters. So therefore, I have to teach you about spiritual matters. And that's really true for all of us. We all came from nothing. We all came with no spiritual understanding. And we we're all kind of a product of our upbringing. And so therefore, we need teaching to help us understand. And we need, to, we need teaching to help us understand spiritual matters especially. Verse number three, he says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed or anathema, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, why did he say that? The reason he put that verse in there or that sentence in there is because he was trying to... Uh, uh, give them a simple test to understand. He said, "These th that you are vulnerable for false ideas and false teachings. You are vulnerable for false manifestations because you were, you were raised in a very sinful environment. And you came from a very wicked background. And so therefore, I need you to have a some kind of a, 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 a spiritual check, if you please, or a test, so that you'll know if what's happening is really of God or it's not of God. So that's what verse number three is all about. So he said, I want you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed or anathema. So he said, if somebody comes and starts teaching you something and they don't call Jesus Messiah, don't listen to them. They're not speaking the truth. They are a false prophet. They are peddling an incorrect doctrine. So he's giving them a test, if you please. He's giving them a, uh, a template to put every teacher and every doctrine up against. And he said, if they don't believe Jesus is Messiah, if they don't teach or preach that Jesus is Lord, then they are wrong. So wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed or anathema. So they're not in the Holy Ghost if they say he's anathema. They're not in the Holy Ghost if they say Jesus was an imposter. They're not in the Holy Ghost if they don't say that Jesus is the Almighty God manifest in the flesh. Don't listen to those people. No man calleth Jesus accursed if they are working by the Spirit of God. Now, why did he have to say this? Because these gifts can be really badly abused. These gifts can, can get people in all kinds of trouble, especially some of these vocal gifts. Messages in tongues and prophecy and interpretation of tongues. This can really cause trouble. And so you have to be careful. So he wanted to make sure that we had a test to determine if, in fact, this was really of God. And so no man, he said, speaking by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed. And no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So you have to have this revelation. You have to have this understanding to, to be able to clearly say that Jesus is Lord, Jehovah, Almighty God. Amen. You have to have this uh, understanding, this revelation, the Holy Ghost. I mean, you know what? I just have to be honest and tell you. The mighty God in Christ is a revelation the mighty God in Christ, the revel it's a revelation. And maybe some of you remember when you couldn't see it. You couldn't understand it. It made no sense to you. 
until maybe one day one Bible verse opened the whole door to you. And you began to see the oneness of God everywhere you looked in Scripture. It was an absolute revelation to you. No man can say that Jesus is Lord, Jehovah, the Almighty God of the Old Testament, but by the revelation of the Spirit. And so what he's trying to help them understand here is we need the Spirit of God to help us operate these gifts. These are spiritual gifts. Watch out that you don't get messed up. Um, there was a similar test to, of this in the Old Testament. Let me, let me share that with you real quick. If you would, if you would project uh, Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. This is the Old Testament. It says, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. So he's saying if a prophet rises up and he tells you something that actually comes to pass, and yet he says, Let's go after other gods, that we have not followed. Verse 3, thou shalt not, somebody say not, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord, listen, the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Can I just be honest and tell you, there's a lot of charlatans out there. And there's a lot of people that are preaching a lot of false stuff. And I don't care if they can pull a rabbit out of a hat. I don't care if they can prophesy and something comes to pass. It just may very well be that the Lord's testing you to see whether you really love him or you're going to go after that fascinating miracle. The point is, according to uh, the Old Testament. It's the same as in the New Testament. You got to have a test. And what is the test? Anybody that doesn't call Jesus Lord, don't listen to him. Anybody who says Jesus is accursed, that he is an imposter, that he's a, a pretend, don't listen to those people. So you have to have this test. Amen. Um, let me, let me back up just a minute here. I, I skipped one verse that is really powerful that I want you to see. Uh, John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. This is the, the test that... The test was, no man can call Jesus Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now notice in John 16, this is what Jesus said. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth is come, the Holy Ghost, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall, as Jesus said, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. He shall glorify me, when the spirit of truth is come, he will glorify Jesus Christ. He will not deny him. He will show that he is the almighty God manifest in flesh. The New International Version translates that last phrase this way. Because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known unto you. And the whole point I'm trying to make here is that when Paul was giving these spiritual gifts, instructions about these spiritual gifts... He was trying to help them understand, you need to pay attention to who you listen to. These gifts have to be operated correctly. And if anybody doesn't believe that Jesus is Messiah, that he's almighty God manifest in flesh, they call him a curse. Don't listen to those people because they're not right. And even if they prophesy, even if they give a message in tongues, even if they say something and it happens, if they call Jesus a curse, don't pay any attention to them. If they read your mail, you know what that means? Yeah. I saw the... 
and they really told you the truth. Don't listen to them. If they, if they call Jesus accursed, don't listen to them. And so there has to be these, uh, uh, these guardrails, if you please, on these nine spiritual gifts. Amen. Amen. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of uh, Matthew 16. Matthew, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Matthew 16, verses 16 and 17. It, it, it helps us understand that we need the Spirit of God to reveal things to us. It needs to be God. When, when Jesus was telling the disciples, um, he said, uh, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? And, and, and Peter had this revelation. Thou art the Christ, the Son or the flesh of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. He was saying, this was revealed to you by the Spirit. You've got to listen to the Spirit. You can't listen to what somebody says if they're not following the Spirit. Flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you but my spirit. And I'm telling you that great revelation comes from the spirit of God. Thank God for preachers that will preach and show us the word. And, and God will use that word to reveal himself to us. But we have to understand when we're talking about spiritual gifts, we need the spirit of God to be involved in this. And this needs to be a revelation. Amen. Verses 5 and 6. Let's go on. Uh, verse 4, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. I want you to, I want you to pay attention to verses 4, 5, and 6 here. Verses 4, 5, and 6. There are diversity, look at verse 4. There are diversities, different gifts, but it is the same Spirit. So he's saying, when we talk about these nine spiritual gifts, there are different ways that these are, are uh, uh, they're different gifts, but it's the same spirit that operates all of, or gives all of these gifts. The word spirit here represent, could, could be represented as supernatural action. It's the same supernatural action that operates these gifts. Verse number five, and there are differences of administrations or ministries, the way they are administered, but it is the same Lord. That word Lord means master. So he's using a different, a different term for, for the Lord in every one of these three verses. So he's saying there's different, uh, verse number four, there's, there's different gifts, but it is the same spiritual action, the same spirit. There are different, uh, 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 different administrations, but it is the same ruler, the same authority. It is the same Lord. Verse 6, and there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God, total of God's divine essence at work. It's all about God, whether it's his spirit, whether it's, it's, uh, uh, it is authority, whether it is the all-encompassing power of God, he is the one that operates and works these gifts. Amen. Amen. These gifts work or operate differently, but it's the same God who works them all. Now, verse number seven tells us that the manifestation... That word manifestation means to reveal or to show plainly. So when these, when these gifts are revealed or manifested, when they are shown plainly, he says in verse number 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So what he's actually trying to help us understand is these gifts are operated for the common good. They're not operated so I can boast and say, I have all nine gifts of the Spirit. 
No. If God chooses to operate one of the gifts of the Spirit through me, he's doing it so that you and I in the church and everybody will profit from it. It's not for vain glory. It's not for selfish pride. It's not a sign of spirituality, okay? Come on, somebody. God can talk through a donkey, all right? And I know some people think, you know, wow, I must be, I'm really spiritual because I operate the gifts of the Spirit. That's not a sign of your spirituality. It's just a sign that you know how to yield to that. And so I'm telling you, these gifts are for the benefit of the entire church. Amen. They are for the benefit of the entire church to profit with all the common good. Let me tell you what God has in mind here. He wants the church to be blessed. He wants the church to grow. He wants you to overcome sin. He wants you to not get tripped up by the devil. And so therefore, he will operate these gifts in ways, for example, a word of wisdom. You may not know what to do sometime, but the Lord will operate this gift of the word of wisdom in you, and suddenly you know what I'm, I know what I'm supposed to do. And you said, where did that come from? It was the word of wisdom. It was God giving you a supernatural bit of wisdom in the moment that you needed it so you could make a good decision so it wouldn't destroy destroy your family and the church would be blessed as a result of it it's for the benefit of the kingdom of god for the church at large for the common good god grants these gifts of the spirit for times of special need for times of special need I know some people may disagree with what I'm getting ready to say, but I'm going to say it because it's what I believe, and it's what I believe the, 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 the Scripture teaches. These gifts do not operate continually. However, they should be a normal function of the church. We should be willing and open to allow God to work these gifts through us whenever they're needed. A word of knowledge. If you're praying for something, we're going to talk about it in, in, in depth in a moment, but some of you, are, I, want you, I want you to stay with me here. If you're praying with somebody and God tells you something about them and what's going on in their life and you speak that under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God's trying to help that person. It's not because you're, you know, all that. It's because he's trying to bless that person and help that person. And you just happen to be the one that is willing there to be used of God. Thank God for that. The church needs these gifts operating. But you know what? I don't walk walk around giving a word of knowledge to my wife every single minute of every day. (laughs) Okay? That wouldn't last long. So they do not operate continually. However, God gives them at the right time. Amen. Notice the scripture says it is the word. Okay. The word of knowledge. The word of wisdom. It's a portion of wisdom. It's not all wisdom. It's not all knowledge. It's the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. You know, I can't say this definitively, but I've got a feeling that Jesus walked by the man, the lame man at the gate beautiful and never healed him. So that gift was not operating continuously. He walked past a lot of people that he never healed. There were a lot of people that were possessed of evil spirits that he never spoke to unless they got in his way. And so I'm just telling you, it does, they don't continuously operate, but when the time comes and we need them, thank God for the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. So these gifts are supernatural. All right? Supernatural. And we really need to understand this because... There are three levels. Just, just let me give you a couple of examples. 
there are three levels of wisdom, all right? Number one would be human wisdom. Some of you are pretty smart. You're pretty wise. You've lived a long time, and you've been through the school of hard knocks, and you know, you've learned the hard way on a lot of stuff, and you're pretty wise. Thank God for that. So there is human wisdom, and there is human knowledge. You study hard. You read the books. You, you, know, you, you educated yourself. Thank God for knowledge. There is natural knowledge or wisdom, human wisdom or human knowledge. Secondly, there would, there's what we would call spiritual wisdom and spiritual knowledge, and that's what we get from the Word of God. When we study the Word of God, it I love the book of Proverbs because it gives us wisdom. It helps us know how to deal with people. It helps us know how to, how to you know, respond in particular situations. Thank God for biblical wisdom that, and biblical knowledge and uh, you know, spiritual wisdom. Thank God for that. And that's open to all of us. But there's a third level, and that's what we're talking about tonight. And this is called the, the, the gifts of the Spirit. And this is a supernatural word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. It didn't come out of a book, didn't necessarily even come from the word of God necessarily. God told you something. You were just praying, asking God, what am I supposed to do in this situation? And boom, the answer came. It was wisdom. The word of wisdom was being operated in you. And so... We need for spiritual gifts to be in operation in the New Testament church. They were in operation, and when we start going through these spiritual gifts, I'm going to show you in the book of Acts where I believe they were operating. And so we need to understand that they operated in the New Testament church, the first century church, and the second century church, and they need to continually be operating in our generation as well. And so uh, uh, these are supernatural gifts. Amen. Supernatural gifts. Now look at, look at chapter 12, verse number 7. But the manifestation, as I mentioned a few moments ago, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Another translation says it like this. For the profit of all, for the common good. Now, I want you to notice, we won't take time to read it, but maybe later on tonight or tomorrow, whatever, read chapter 12. You're going to find out that what happens, what, what Paul talks about immediately following these nine spiritual gifts is he starts talking about uh, the body. He starts, uh, he starts talking about... Uh, uh, how the body of Christ is to operate, how it has many members with different functions. So what he's trying to help us understand is we need to operate these spiritual gifts, but yet remember, every person doesn't necessarily operate every one of these gifts because the church is like a body. It's got hands, it's got feet, it's got eyes, it's got ears, it's got a nose, it's got... By the way, did you know why the Lord gave you two ears and one mouth? I think that's old news, but just thought I'd mention that. The body of Christ. And so, so after he talks about how these nine spiritual gifts are given for the benefit and the profit of everyone, he goes into a discourse about the human body and how the human body needs to follow and work together and every part has to do its every part of the body has to operate its part and do its thing and and uh, don't say because I'm not the eye then I'm not important or because I'm not a hearing then I'm not important every part is important and every every uh, uh, every part of the body does its job and so that's what he was trying to help us understand. And it is for the profit of all. It's not to, to get proud about. It's not to feel good about myself. It's to profit the body. Amen. Megan, if you'll come, I'm going to try to finish up these last few points here. Boy, I'd really like to finish up five or six more points, but I, I know we got to get out there. There are several, are you ready for this, knots 
Not K-N-O-T-S, but N-O-T-S. Several knots I want you to remember about the gifts of the Spirit. Number one, spiritual gifts do not replace the written word of God. All right? The gifts of the Spirit will work in cooperation with and in tandem with the written word of God. If somebody prophesies and they prophesy something that's not in the word of God, spoiler spoiler alert, they're a false prophet. Okay? So the first thing to always remember is spiritual gifts do not replace the written word of God. Number two, spiritual gifts do not replace spiritual leadership in the church. You can't just say, you know, I want to give a message in tongues. Thus saith the Lord, pastor's wrong and I'm right. Brother Deal told me one time, he said there were some, back years and years and years ago, he said there were some people that were, there was a lady in the church that was mad at some people. And she was up in the, Prayer, up at the altar praying and they were all finished praying they were all outside under the carp under the canopy and and she was so mad at them she thought they were talking about him about her so she walked out there and she stormed out there and she stopped and gave a message in tongues and then the interpretation and she interpreted it and said thus saith the lord i hate you all <laughs> that was not the lord it was not the lord spiritual gifts do not violate or replace the written word of God. They do not replace spiritual leadership in the church. Number three, spiritual gifts do not replace the daily guidance we receive from God through prayer and submission of heart and mind and will of God. In other words, you you gotta have your relationship with God. These spiritual gifts are kind of adding on to that, okay? They're adding on to that. You know, it, I don't want to get on a soapbox here, but you know, every time somebody stands here and preaches the word of God, that's powerful. I'm not saying that when someone gives a message in tongues and interpretation, that's not powerful. But I'm telling you, preaching the word of God is powerful. Amen. And so, you know, it, messages in tongues and interpretation and these gifts of the Spirit do not replace the word they coincide with the word they do not replace spiritual authority in your life they work alongside spiritual authority in your life if you say the lord gave me a prophecy and it was that you know you rise up against your spiritual authority that was not of god was not of god and if somebody tells you that that's not of god because spiritual gifts will not violate spiritual leadership amen Spiritual gifts will not replace your daily relationship with God. Spiritual gifts are not a sign of spiritual maturity. Okay? People say, well, they must be really spiritual because they do all these gifts of the Spirit. Not necessarily. Okay? The word gifts is the word charisma here, which comes from the word charis, which is the word we get the word grace from. So what is grace? It's unmerited favor. It's undeserved favor. The truth is, is that operating the gifts of the Spirit says more about, says less about the recipient and more about the giver. Should I say that again? Operating the gifts of the Spirit says less about the person operating the gift and more about the one giving the gift. (laughs) People say, well, that person prophesied and it happened and they were living like the devil. It says less about them and more about the one who gave it to them. And so that's what we have to understand. Spiritual gifts are very important. In fact, um, just, just, just real quick, put up there uh, Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, verse 22. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? 
prophecy? Have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have we not cast out devils? In thy name have we not done many mighty wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So all of these supernatural gifts, if you please, is not a sign of spirituality because anybody can fake them. Anybody can pretend. Anybody can get lucky every now and then. So what we have to do is we have to keep our relationship with God up. We have to listen to spiritual authority. We've got to make sure it's all founded in the word of God. Amen. I was going to read Acts 4, 9, and 10 when they said, he said, you're looking at us. Peter said, you're looking at us because this man is raised up and he's healed. We didn't heal him. The Lord healed him through us. It wasn't us. We, we don't. The Lord gave us the gift of healing. And he is standing before you whole. So, so we'll, we'll continue next time by starting to talk about uh, uh, who can operate these gifts and um, uh, how these gifts should operate in love, how these gifts are subject to the recipient's control, there's a lot of regulations that the Lord put on these gifts through the prophet or through the preacher, through the apostle Paul. And then once we get through all of that, well, I'll answer this question too. Does one person claim the gift and nobody else gets it? And it is his, it his until it's all over with? We'll, we'll answer that question too. Then we'll start into the three gifts of revelation, the power to know, word of wisdom, the word of knowledge and the discerning of spirits. I hope you learned something tonight. I hope I didn't put you to sleep. So, uh, everybody okay? Aren't you thankful the gifts of the Spirit are in operation in the church? Amen. Let's stand together. Praise God. Let's sing before we dismiss. Amen. I'm coming back, back to the heart of It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Why don't we thank the Lord for his word tonight? Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for teaching us your ways. Thank you for letting your word instruct us about spiritual gifts, Lord. I thank you for giving us these nine spiritual gifts, giving us the ministerial gifts, the fivefold ministry. Thank you for giving us, Lord, these, uh, these other gifts, Lord, to minister to the body, these service gifts. Thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. Thank you for bringing us together and giving us a chance and a freedom, Lord to serve you and to live for you. I pray that you would go with us now as we leave this service. Bless our fellowship and the food. Pray that you would bless this Sunday if you should tarry. Let Pentecost happen again on Pentecost Sunday, I pray. Bless every activity and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. God bless you. Enjoy fellowship and uh, we'll see you on Sunday.